money market funds. We've got to talk about these things. They did something interesting last week, which also coincided with some very big moves in the market. So we've really got to talk about that right now and what that means and how we are tracking that. But before we do that, smash that like button, subscribe if you've been with us a while and haven't done so yet. Check out the Trade Cave store, link in the description as well as the channel bio. Now, first of all, look, this graph here, this is, um, this is from, from Fred, Economic Data, Federal Reserve Bank St. Louis. Uh, this is just a tracking of money market funds over the decades. And you can see money market funds really weren't a thing. It goes all the way back to 1950, but it was zero up until 1974, which coincides just a few years after we got off the gold standard. So we got off the gold standard in uh, 1971, and then money market funds started to become a thing in 1974, just three years later. And you can see here that in 2023, and going into 2024, it is the highest it has ever been by a large margin. We're talking here that in Q2 2024, it was up at $6.5 trillion. And then down here, when was this? 2009, that was right around the time that we were having the great financial crisis. It was only at $3.8 trillion. So about half of what it was in 2024. So that's interesting. Um, I mean, we also... In, in, increased the money supply, you know, doubled it in 2020. So that's actually not super surprising to see, but it's still interesting to see how this graph is growing over time, how it's becoming such a big thing for the money market funds, which is a place for you to park your money relatively safely and for a long time getting a low return. But for a short period of time since 2022, uh, it's been a place to get, you know, a five and a half percent return. Now, we track this every week right here, the ICI money uh, market fund assets, where they tell you what the what it is every week. So this one from the Fed, this one is about, you know, two, three months behind. And the one from ICI, this one is, you know, every week. So something very interesting. Uh, so September 11th, this was last week, the week before, uh, we were at $6.3 trillion, $6.323 trillion. Uh, and from that week until this week, it decreased by $20 billion. Where do you think that $20 billion landed itself? Yeah, you guessed it, in equities, in stocks, in the market, in these things that we saw jumping up 10, 20% in a day, uh, just, you know, right after that rate cut uh, well, yesterday, basically. Um, where did that come from? Well, look, retail actually increased their money market funds. Okay, so retail increased their money market funds. Guess where that discrepancy came from? Institutional. Institutions are buying this dip. Institutions are buying into that Fed rate cut. So, uh, what does that say for things like a recession that says that we're probably not going to have one immediately? It says that we're probably going to see this draw down by a few hundred billion dollars first on the institutional side. Uh, and then once this retail side, once, once they sufficiently drain these money market funds a little bit and bring it back into the market and pump it up real big, right? And then we start seeing retail not grow, but in fact, start to shrink and shrink faster than institutions on the money market funds, meaning that the retail is getting fully invested. That is when we're going to start seeing some shenanigans. And that's when I'll start getting scared for the market. Um, that's one indicator that the margin debt will also be an indicator or uh, anytime I start seeing every single piece of news being ultra bullish, that's another time I'll start being <laughs> really cautious. Like we see something like the soft landing achieved. And everyone is saying it, then I'm like, eh, maybe it's time to leave. Uh, but this is something I'm watching very closely as well. Okay, we're watching the institutional money market funds. And as those decrease, and retail increases like it is right now, that's that's going to institutions going to spur some FOMO among the retail, and then we'll start seeing retail drop real fast. And that's when I think uh, the, the, they'll spring their trap on us. Uh, anyways, let's move to, on to TMF real quick. This thing is still falling, still falling. Very interesting, considering we got a 0.5 rate cut, that means that the 20 year is actually going up in, in terms of its overall uh, rates, which is kind of interesting. I think we'll probably see this fall a little bit more. Uh, you can see here, this blue line is the 20 moving 21 uh, exponential moving average. So the 21 EMA, the green line is the 5 EMA. The dotted line there, the dots, that is the volume weighted moving average. Uh, we are below all three of those things right now. And we fell uh, and disconnected from the 21, okay? So that means that there is, unless we turn around in a day or two and, and get back above the five, that there is a bear flag. 
And that means that if we go lower than 59.56, we're likely to come back to support, which is currently at 57.29. Okay, we could see ourselves go there on TMF. Uh, I don't think that this is going to last very long. Uh, I think that this is going to shake out a little bit of holders and then um, it'll start crawling its way back up to the higher levels. Um, I have been buying more of this. Uh, I bought a couple of call options out to February on TMF. I will be buying a few more as it comes down and I want to see it come down and then start to curl back up again uh, on TMF. And once it starts to, once I see a day or two of it curling back up, I'll add to that position a little bit. And then around, you know, late November, December, I'll probably be cutting some of that position since I only bought out until February. So that's what I'm doing there with TMF. It's a little bit disappointing to see it dropping as rates are dropping. Uh, overall, as the Fed is dropping rates, the 20-year rate has actually gone up, which is interesting to see that dynamic play out. Um, but that is where I am with TMF, TMF right now. I am actively playing TMF right now. I am watching it in this channel here. Let me draw my channel. Do I have it drawn on there? No. All right, let me draw my channel here. So about right here, and we're going something like this, and something like this. Mm, that one, yeah, maybe there. Yeah, that's about right. So that's what I'm looking at right now for that, right? This channel. So we're at the bottom of that channel. I would like to see it reverse here. We've seen it come down like this before, right? Like cut down into the 20 and then come right back up. But the difference here, so there's a stark difference here on this particular chart right here. So one, we dropped way below it immediately, right? And now we have opened up completely disconnected from the 20. The 20 is up here at 60, 48, and we're currently at 58, uh, 59, 89, and we opened up beneath that, like completely disconnected from it. So that to me says that there will be a little bit more of a downside or at least some sideways action out of TMF before we go anywhere else. Let's take a look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin is actually down a little bit today, point down 0.19% point, um, right now. Now, what is ominous about this? We came to the 200 day moving average, which is this pink line, and we are printing some tweezers, right? If we fall any lower than halfway down this, the body of this candle, I'm going to be thinking this is bad for Bitcoin short term. So let's take a look. Where do we not want to go? We don't want to go lower than 62.3. So any lower than 62,300, I'm going to be sounding the alarm a little bit on this being a tweezer setup, similar to something like back here where we saw that these wick, wick, and then came down. Phew. We see a big nasty candle like this one here from August 26th. If we see a nasty candle like that, that means that we're going back into a leg down. Uh, now that might just be a leg down on the overall upward trend that we're seeing right now. That is entirely possible. Like we came up right, we went sideways, we went up, we came back into the 21, and then we went way up into the 200. We might see ourselves come back into the five. We might see ourselves come back into the five, maybe dip a little bit lower to, than the five, and then work our way back up and then eventually break through this 200 day moving average. Uh, but I'm not too, too concerned about it because it is the 200 day moving average. Okay. It's going to take a little bit of momentum to break through that thing. Momentum that we may not necessarily have at this time. All this, this three days of momentum, that was all just used up in the rate cut, right? We got the rate cut and it went and it hit it. And now it's like, ah, I need more momentum. I need a new catalyst to send me higher. As long as we hold the five, I think that we can see it continue to climb. As long as we hold the five moving average. A lower than the five moving average, then the 21 moving average needs to hold us, right? Uh, that volume weighted one, I'm not too concerned about that. That I'm using more as sentiment in terms of as long as we're above it, I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, and even if we dip a little bit below it, as long as we're not like cratering beneath it, I'm feeling pretty good. I would like to see that volume weighted moving average, the dotted line start printing above the blue line. That would make me happy. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but that is what's going on with Bitcoin right now. We could likely see another little bear flag start, or sorry, bull flag start to form and then launch back up again. Uh, I don't like this candle today. We'll see how it closes right now. I would like to see it get over the 200 day moving average, but I also understand that this is a resistance point. It's the 200 day moving average. It's the top of the descending channel that we've been in since March. Uh, it's not going to be easy to break this thing. So we've got to get some more momentum to coming through on that. And that means that also our crypto related assets like the Bitcoin miners are all down today. Aside from Terra Wolf, we'll talk about that in a little bit too. Terra Wolf had a big old day yesterday. I mean, they all had a big day yesterday, but that one had a really big day yesterday. Um, all, all others are kind of down a little bit today. MicroStrategy down 0.04%. Uh, so, you know, that's what's going on there with Bitcoin. So let's talk about Wolf here. So Wolf. Wolf is up when all, everything else is down. Now, it's not up a whole lot. It's up half a percent right now, but pretty much every single other every single other one is down. And there's not really any news that came out to indicate why this is happening. And yesterday, 
We saw Wolf was up 9.85% yesterday. At one point, it was up a whole 13% yesterday. None of the others were up that much yesterday. So this is interesting. Uh, now we're going flat on Wolf finally here in the day. I don't like seeing that. Now, what don't I like about this move? I don't like, again, like with Bitcoin, I'm seeing something that could be tweezers here. So if today we see this drop back down to like 434 or honestly, even just fourth like 40 or lower on Wolf, I'll be calling this potentially a tweezer and I'll be looking for it to make a move below 422. And if we get a move below 422, we're going to test this trend line to here, this red one. This dotted line, we're going to test that. We test that and bounce back up. This could end up being something like a double bottom, like we saw back over here, right? Like we saw back over here. Uh, well, actually, this case might be a triple, right? One, two, like one, two, three, and then whoo, and curl on back up again and try to make like some kind of bowl. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this becomes a cup and handle over time. Kind of a, a, a wayward one, but you know, like if we went like this and we came back up and then went like that. And then finally broke through like something like that. That would be actually pretty, pretty textbook and look great. Honestly, we're getting like it would be like a bullish formation coming off of this bullish formation that was lower. This double bottom down here going into a cup and handle, which then takes us to the highs again up at 655. That'd be pretty cool for Wolf, actually. So let's let's keep an eye for that. Let's see if that happens with Wolf. Uh, but yeah, I'm not too concerned overall. But I think short term, uh, we are still in September for 10 more days. And then we go into what? October again, which October is going to be very volatile in both directions. It's an election year. We, you know, the election isn't over yet. October tends to be a pretty up and down and all around type of month. So don't be too surprised if we see these things drop in October, like the first two weeks of October and then near the end of October, starting to see things launch. So that is what my current um, thought is in the market. That's what I think is going to happen. I'm looking for. Um, I'm looking for weakness going into October. I'm looking for at least a week or two of weakness in October. And then I'm looking for these, these boys here, these guys to drain this down to like maybe 3.5 or $3.4 trillion. And then sometime around late November, see this drain down to like 1 trillion, maybe, maybe more, maybe it'll be 2 trillion. Maybe it'll just be $500 billion from them, whatever. I'm looking for this to drain fast sometime in November. And then and then that's when I think that institutions will start to spring the trap on retail sometime in later in December or so. Uh, we'll see that if that is what happens there. Okay. Next thing. Uh, last thing I want to talk about today is I'm going to change up some things on the channel. I'm going to, and I've been doing this for a while. I've been doing the income machine uh, videos. I've been trying to do more of them. I'm going to institute it as a weekly show now. So uh, every week we're going to do an income machine. Sometimes I'm going to be following up on the micro strategy and NVIDIA plays that I am putting real money into. Uh, sometimes I'm going to be talking about other stocks. And in addition to talking about them, like I've been talking about Vert, right? VRT Vertiv. Um, and this thing has just absolutely launched. Uh, I wish I had the money to have played this. But for these ones like Vertiv, that I don't actually have enough money to play it in addition to doing the things that I am already doing with Bitcoin miners and MicroStrategy and NVIDIA, I'm going to do paper trades on these as well, just to keep track of them and see how much money could have been made with this uh, using the income machine strategies uh, you know, for the sake of the video and the sake of tracking it. Because this is one I would have liked to have gotten into, right? So remember, we were talking about it back here when it was crawling up and making a bowl here in August, like late August, right? So talking about late August, we had that big, big sell-off early September for this one, and then it came just rocketing back up, and now it's up over 92. So I was talking about this thing when it was in the high 70s, and now it's in the low 90s. So that is pretty exciting for Vertiv. Uh, it came out of this, this downward trend here. Uh, I would like to see this back test the 21 at least. It's been holding, the 5 has been holding it. Like the five, let me get rid of this line here. The five has been holding this thing up. This green line here has been holding this up. If it breaks the five, it's going to come to the 21 We're around 83. I would like to see it retest the 21 at some point on the way up. And I think that's when I would probably sell uh, some uh, options on it. But actually for, because I, I can roll. So in fact, this weekend, uh, I'll be doing uh, a video income machine for Vertiv, which means uh, probably sometime today I'll open up a paper trade on this, selling an option on it. Uh, uh, and that's solely not because 
I don't think that the stock is worth it. It's just I don't have enough money right now to be selling a a put on a $90 stock that's over $9,000. I don't have that in my account free right now. So I'll have to do this one with paper to trust it just to track it. Uh, but anyways, that's all I've got for you today. Please like, comment, subscribe, share this video. Check out the Trade Cave store link in the description as well as the channel bio and have a profitable day.